Hello everyone, and welcome back to another session of Dark Souls 2 PvP and another weapon showcase. This time I am using the Malbreaker, which is the shortest of the thrusting swords, as you can clearly see. Now, this weapon, because of its reach and size and all of that, people generally don't expect this thing to be very viable or damaging or any of that sort of stuff. Well, they're wrong. They're very, very, very wrong. Now, getting started with the Mail Breaker. This weapon requires 5 strength and 12 dexterity in order to wield. When fully upgraded, it has a C scaling in strength and a C in dexterity. The base damage, the physical base damage of the weapon, is 150. And for me, the attack rating is 303 with a ring of blades plus 2. So that is a 253 without one. Now, that being said, uh, you will notice I hit very, very high multiple times. That is due to the counter strength of the weapon being 140. That definitely helps out this weapon a lot and makes it very viable. That's where you'll get a lot of damage from. So that's what makes this weapon better than most people expect. Uh, the poise damage of the weapon is 15 per hit, and the weight because it's such a small weapon, is only 0.5 units. Now, this weapon, I would have to say that the biggest pro, without a doubt, would be its damage on critical attacks. Whether it's a guard break, whether it's a riposte, or a backstab, the critical damage on this weapon is definitely better than a lot of daggers, actually. So, because of that, uh, that's something you really need to keep in mind and be careful of when you see someone who's fighting with one of these. That's definitely the biggest pro. Other pros would be the counter strength, as I mentioned earlier. I mean, in the very first fight, I did hit a 490 with this weapon. And, you know, 303 attack rate and hitting 490s. Yeah, that counter strength really, really does quite a bit for the weapon. Other pros, I would definitely have to say the fact that its size causes most people to underestimate it. They are, they're like, oh yeah, I could, I could trade hits with that, no, no problem. And then, of course, you hit medium to high 400s on them, and, well, then it's a bit of a problem for them. But, at that point, it's a little bit too late. So, there's that. Another pro, I would have to say, would be the fact that this thing weighs almost nothing, and if you were to, say, make a build around it, then you are going to be able to do, to do that very, very easily because of the fact that you can, you know, use pretty much any rings you want. You can use the Ring of Blades and Flynn's Ring without much of a problem if you were to use this weapon on a build that's meant to use those two rings. And that adds an extra 100 damage for you. So that plus a Leo Ring plus that high counter strength it already has, that's going to do a lot. That is going to do a very, very good amount of damage. With good criticals and all of that good stuff added in, you've got a very dangerous weapon, and people don't expect it. So, the biggest con of this weapon? I mean, you can probably guess. It's short. That's literally the biggest con of the weapon. It's short. Other cons, the poise damage. I mean, it's only 15 poise damage per hit. If that's really a problem, throw on a stone ring. Problem solved. The attack rating? Yeah, 253, that's not really great but you have that high counter strength. You can easily wear the Ring of Blades or Flynn's Ring or both and get an extra 100 attack rating, so there's that as well. Really, the cons of this weapon are things that can be easily overlooked and are easily countered, easily fixed with rings. So that's something to definitely keep in... Whoops. Sorry about that. That's something to definitely keep in mind. Now, there is another pro about this weapon I did forget to mention. Its R2s actually have shield piercing abilities, so if you have a turtle, instead of, you know, guard breaking them and doing a repost for well over a thousand damage, you can just R2 and poke through their shield just to mess with them. So I guess that's a good thing? Although it's definitely more effective to just do the guard break and then repost them with that. So... You know, that's your choice. If you enjoy messing with people and they're turtling, you can just chip their health away little by little, but I, I don't really see the point to that in most situations. 
One thing I also did forget to mention as a con, uh, now that I'm thinking of it, would be the fact that its durability, it's decent enough, but if you're fighting someone who is in heavy armor, then you might have a slight problem with the fact that you won't be doing much damage to them, and your durability will go down pretty fast, so that's something else you should keep in mind. Other than that, this is just your standard thrusting sword class weapon. It's got the same type of parry. It does a lot of damage on the riposte, which is actually unlike most of the other thrusting swords. I mean, that's more like how they were in Dark Souls 1, not so much Dark Souls 2. But it's definitely a good thing. Also, of course, because it is such a fast weapon, when someone is using a big heavy strength weapon, you can just sort of poke at them, pick them apart little by little. And it works out very well. So, anyway, this is the last fight. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it helpful in one way or another. Please like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff, and I will see you guys next time.